As a real estate agent, you know that the industry can be tough to navigate with constant challenges and obstacles to overcome. That's why we created the Agents Who Crush It in Real Estate podcast, where top performing agents share their insights and strategies for success. Join us as we dive into the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a thriving real estate business. Your host, Lindsay Pavaza, will be your guide on this journey. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from the best in the business. Hello, and welcome back to the Agents Who Crush It in Real Estate podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Favaza, and today I am really excited about the guest that we have. Hailing originally from Ukraine, but calling Chicago her true home, Julia Cherepova has carved a niche for herself in the real estate world. Not just in the Windy City, but also in the sunny landscapes of Miami and the picturesque coasts of San Diego. Julia's love for Chicago's neighborhoods, its vibrant culture, and the simple lifestyle it offers is palpable. But what truly sets her apart is her expansive network of investors, buyers, sellers, and industry professionals that she's built over a decade. With personal experience as a real estate investor, Julia brings a unique perspective to the table consistently exceeding her clients' expectations. And let me tell you, her reputation as a fierce negotiator with a heart of gold is well-earned. Outside of sealing deals and making dreams come true, Julia is all about fitness and cherishing moments with her son. Let's dive deep into her journey, her strategies, and the heart behind her success. Julia, welcome to the show today, my friend. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you so much for having me here. And Thank you. I appreciate I'm so it. I'm excited to have you here because we've been kind of writing back and forth on the Crusher page. And I know you and Anthony have met a few times um, and are, you know, friendly at events and things like that. So I was super excited to have you on because I think you've got a really powerful story to tell. And let's start by how you came to this country, how you got started in real estate. Take us back to those days. All right, well, let's do it. So my story is definitely different than any story that you heard ever on this podcast. So I am originally from Ukraine. Uh, I was born and raised there, there, and I came to United States when I was 21. So I got the Bachelor in Finance from Ukraine, and my parents is like, Julia, here is $200, and we have a flight to United States, and good luck. <laughs> wow. They just so, wanted what, what was best for you and that that's what they yes. thought you would be able to do well and Yeah, and the main thing that all my life I learned German. So when I came to United States in North Dakota, city mined, uh I was a housekeeper in Best Western Hotel. I spoke zero English. Wow. Zero. Like I didn't understand. I knew like my name is Julia. And how yes, many years ago was this? Huh? How many years ago was this? 2011. So just 12 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So I quickly need to adopt in this country. I need to like, I have like very business mindset. So I knew like I need to move to a different place. So North Dakota is nice, but definitely not for me. (laughs) So I found a big Ukrainian community in Chicago. Then I've got some connections. Uh, I booked a flight and I didn't know anybody. I'm like, okay. I'm going to Chicago and let's see what happens. So three months later, I was in Chicago. I found another job uh, washing dishes in the kitchen. So and then I was a server at that place, like some Polish place. And yeah, I really like Chicago so much more. <laughs> Definitely more a big city. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually when I was bartendering and like it was a great job, but I understood there is like no career wise that I really want to have career. I want to have like, you know, more money because I kind of like that lifestyle. And I feel like a lot of people, um, you know, in the comfort zone where they can, they make enough and, um, but they not making like so much they can achieve, you know, you weren't in control of how much you were going to make. Cause it wasn't up yeah. to you how many people came in that night, you know? No, no. Yeah. The tips were nice. You know, yeah. you relax, you talk to people. So Pretty much what we do in real estate, you know, you're just like, we do, we talk, we're having usually drinks involved in real estate too. <laughs> yeah. And we also like dealing with people problems where, you know, like I'm bartenders, they told me and I'm like, no, everything is okay. You gotta be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're like a yeah, therapist. So really helped me. And actually all my first clients, they were people from the bar. 
So it was like Ukrainian bar. So all this, I, I got them to be my first clients because I literally had no family. And like people from here, they're so blessed because they have family, cousins, brothers, uh, people they, you know, went to the school, universities, and like all this already background huge. And I'm like from zero, like all my Thanksgiving and Christmas, I was by myself. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that. yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm like, um, so like the way I've got to real estate was also another great story. Uh, I've got this lady and like she drove like a beautiful convertible red car wearing all Chanel. She came to my bar, like super like cheaper bar. And she's like, what is the most expensive wine do you have? And we had like $5 wine. She's like, please give me one. And all question that I had in my, you know, immigration, like how is like, how did she like what she does? What does she doing? Like, and I asked her, she's like, I do real estate. I'm like, what is real estate? So she told me, she's like, oh my God, Julia, you got to be a good in real estate. Like I see what you do, how you do. Here's my business card. Call me. And I, I think a lot of people can relate to this, that they don't feel good enough. So I am like basically bad, super bad English. Uh, I don't know anybody. You know, she's like driving a car like she like it's just like, why not? No, 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 no. All excuses right in my head. So mm-hmm. six months, I didn't call her for six months. And then I, I somehow found her card. I'm like, like, I just give her a call. She's like, please come over to my office. I was waiting for this call. Oh, yay. Everything oh happens God. for a reason. He was waiting for my call. And coming to her office, she make one call. And the same day, she signed me up to real estate class. So my, my classes started the same day I came to her office. Wow. Yeah, it was like, I basically didn't have a choice and I'm so glad she did it. <laughs> yeah, because you would have second guessed it. You would have yes. possibly changed your mind and then had another six months that went by, you exactly. know? Exactly. So or I would like, awesome. yeah, you know what, to pass this exam is basically, you know, when I was singing A, B, C, D with all other immigrants in college, like we all just sat down A, B, C, D, like when I was 23 years old. And then I'm opening this real estate book and it's all terms, contingencies, insurance, yeah. appraisals, this. I was literally crying. You know, I feel like why American people are so blessed because they can read, they can understand. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like literally was translating every word in Ukrainian. You know, I'm like, what is this word in Ukraine? What is this word? Then I'm like, start grouping um, uh, sentences. So now it makes more sense. And then this 400 pages book. <laughs> Oh my gosh, how the heck did you pass? So yeah, from the third, <laughs> like, third, third try, third try, so, yeah. Third try, yeah, I mean, so sometimes it takes hard. people way more than that and they speak English. So yes, <laughs> I think yes, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah, but you know, crazy. like, I think it's dedication. Like, I think number one thing, if you're like a good realtor, you need to, like, you need to have dedication and persistence. Like, if you are bad in this, you're going to, like, lose the game before you start it. Yeah. Yeah, so. I love that. So tell me how you ended up sharing time between, you know, Chicago and San Diego and Florida. Like that's a lot going on. So like when did yeah. you make that transition to add in those other markets to your mix? Yeah. Yeah, so 2014, I got my real estate license in Chicago. Um, in 2019, I became a top producer in Chicago. I had assistant, I had a showing uh, agent. Then 2000. 19, <laughs> I moved to Miami for a winter because I just could not handle a winter. And I, like, especially, you know, I was traveling back and forth to Miami. I really love Miami. I have so many friends there, yeah. a nice network. And the uh, winters in Chicago, brutal. Like, mm-hmm. it's super you know, Here in yeah. Boston, just Yeah, that. you know, yeah. <laughs> so when I go to Miami, I'm like, wow, this is paradise. Like, why people live like that? Why cannot do it? So... I got a condo in a brick like an um, SLS building, 30th floor. So I'm in Chicago. I was like spending my winter there. I'm like, well, I'm just sitting. Like, I need to get a license. So I took a book. I took a uh, class and I passed exam. So I got my real estate license in Miami. And then by the time uh, my son came back from Ukraine, uh, so my son has some challenges and he was on big like therapy, physical therapy in Ukraine. So by the time he came back, uh, I just see that 
like it was really hard to uh, having him in Miami by myself with no help since my parents were in Ukraine. Everybody is still like like mm-hmm. that time they were in Ukraine. And my my ex, <laughs> his dad, Rich, and I was like, Julia, come to San Diego. You got to check it out. Such a beautiful weather. You're going to like it. It's better than Miami. Yeah. Please come over here and kind of like, you know, he's going to help me with the sun. So I came to San Diego. I look around and I'm like, wow, like this is paradise. Yeah. Like the weather is nicer. And the price point, you know, like because us realtors is like, wow, like average price in San Diego is $1 million. $1 million. Yep. Whereas yep. my Chicago prices is, is 250000 you know. And I was like feeling good selling like 20, 30, 40 properties a year. But I'm like, here I need to do like four times less and make same amount of money. But what if I produce exactly how I do? And but I just make that much more money. Here. Yeah, <laughs> and it just blow my head. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's give it a try. And plus for my son, um, with all his like health challenges, yeah, he had epilepsy, you know, uh, when he was like a little guy, and then physical disabilities, all this stuff. So I'm like, it's gonna be so much better, and I I, I have a help here, you know, you know, like it's like, why not? Yeah, so that's how I start like doing all this going work. all around. So do you yeah. still travel back to Chicago too? Actually, I'm going there tonight. The how are you tonight. managing the clients and stuff? Yeah, so I'm I'm going to Chicago tonight. Um, I do have a full time assistant, and I have a showing a showing assistant. So I have three showing assistants. Um, in 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 Chicago and in Miami, I have one, and I just have a full time assistant for me. It's an executive real estate assistant, so she helps me with all my transactions, yep. marketing. Um, she does calls. Uh, she manages my CRM, so she also like helps me with a lot of like my stuff for personal things. Uh, yeah, and I feel like so blessed. She's Zena. Her name is Zena. So really, really great woman. <laughs> that is amazing. So, you know, you were thinking about getting into real estate because you did know that you had this like sales background and all of that. So, how is it different from what you maybe thought when you were getting in? You know, like when you were first starting out, you were probably like, "It's going to be great. I'm going to like sell all these houses and make all this money." I think the price point is definitely something that you were probably surprised by. But what is something that now that you're in it and doing well at it that you didn't realize before you started? So before I started, I didn't know what to expect, right? So it's all like profession was new for me. And we just, we think like it's, everything is so easy, you know, like we, we never, we never like know what we exactly going to deal with till we get in the problem. And my first transaction, like opened my eyes, like how many problems it was there and really challenged me to think if I want to continue with this job, because my first client he wants first, he wants to rent one bedroom, then two bedroom, then three bedroom. Then he wants to buy a <laughs> studio. And six months later, I sold him a three unit building. Six months. But it was a great transaction for it, like a multifamily unit. So it was my first transaction where I was like, this guy just wasting my time. You know, he yeah. wants to rent, then he wants to buy. Then he wants like, now nah, look at this building. So, and he gave me a really hard time on inspections. Uh, and then at the end of transaction, on the final walk, uh, the sellers, they took pergola. They took a pergola that like, was outside the building. Yeah. And he's like, at the final walk, he's like, Julia, I'm not buying it. She's like, that's it. I'm done. They want to like. Just because of that. Yes, yes. So they're like, do you think they're smarter? So you're trying to lie to me? Like, cancel the deal. <laughs> so I was like, wow, real estate is so much fun. You know, it's really so much fun <laughs> because uh, I'm like, I've been counting on this transaction for so long. And I'm pretty sure a lot of real estate agents, they don't understand what they're getting is like all they see is like, oh, you, you can make two and a half percent on one million or two and a half percent on 500,000. So like, I wish I knew this nine years ago. I wish like somebody told me like 2014 that first, like you need to expect the worst. And then if it's happened, it happens. Like in real estate, nothing is promised. Like unless you're at the closing and you see this case, nothing is promised. Like when you sign a contract, I never get like, oh my God, we are under contract. No. Like for me, it's like literally 
that's the first step. <laughs> you know, it's just like all the showings was not even steps. Like this yeah. is the first step. And then we have another five steps. And like, you know, especially with the mortgage situation is like, let's see if you qualify today because we know you were qualified two months ago, but now I'm not sure, you know, and when people is like the beating wars, you know, they're like, oh, I can go like 10K over. I'm like, do you really want this house? I know. <laughs> Are you sure you want this house? Because this is just a, such a unique property and you will never see this house ever again for another maybe at least five, 10 years on the market. So like, how much do you want this house? So there is so many things and... Uh, for a new real estate agents, first, like, they need to find a mentor because everybody's like, oh, I want to get a good split. Like, everybody is just looking how much money they can gain. I was saying exact same shoes. Like, when I started, I changed three or four brokerages, like, within two years because the first one charged me 35%. I was new. Then the next one charged me 25%, but they have a bigger name. And I was like, they're kind of specialized in luxury. So I thought they're going to give me some luxury properties. Like, hey, Julia, like, here's your luxury property. Mm-hmm. Silly, but, you know, like we just had all this crazy expectation. And then I went to 100%, whereas they didn't do anything. And I'm like, oh my God, I have I have 100%, but zero but I can't do anything. Zero, yeah. <laughs> zero, times zero is still zero, you know? So I'm like, okay, I don't want 100%. I want more help because I'm new. So it's really up to new agents. Um, is it zero times zero? Or are you going to really get like and uh, help like technologists? Like, and you really need a coach because right now I'm on two coaching programs and I'm like, why I didn't do this earlier? Why, like, I was thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to pay $800 a month. And it's so much money. You know, it's like one third of my rent. It's crazy. But if you would, somebody would tell me this is like my investment to my future profit, to my future income. Like nobody really didn't explain it to me. And, you know, with my Ukrainian background where we trying to save every penny because, you know, country is pretty like not rich, you know, poor. And my family was pretty poor. You know, we never had a car. We never had a car. We never like had vacations, you know. So I was counting like every penny that by coaching. But coaching is so essential. It's so important that somebody tell you, hey, you got to do it. Like you got to do it. 20 transaction this year and I'll tell you how yeah I mean it it, training we talk about this all the time with our crush it brand you know it's like we Uh, you have to professional football professional soccer professional baseball all these people they train every single day why would that be any different for real estate agents especially where the market shifts so much it's like Mm -hmm. you have to have that training and being able to you know figure out what the next steps are for you. So I think it's so smart that you're doing that. And it's so crazy. Exactly what you just said is what we tell people all the time. Like you have to spend a little bit of money to make, you know, to get to that next level. So, but it sounds like not only are you willing to put the money in, but you're also willing to invest your time and to make changes. So what has maybe been the biggest change that you've seen that you've had to make to then get to like the next level for yourself? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, I need to change myself. Like first, it's it's everything starts from here, you know, from your habits. Uh, because like what, you know, why two people different, one is, one is successful, one is not because they have different habits, right? So I really need to start watching my focus, my time, because I was, I was super busy, like very busy, but I was not productive. You know, I was doing a lot of stuff that does not bring money. So I love social media. Like I'm, you know, guys connect. You'll see my social media. I love social media. I respond, like I personally post stories. I personally like respond to every single message I do. Like, but at the end of the day, like this takes so much of my time. And um, like now I need to shift the focus where it's like more productive things that really like brings money, you know, for real estate, it would be more appointments, more showings, more open houses, more meetings, more like connection with lenders, title companies, escrow companies. So you need to really like build out because your network is your net worth, right? Mm -hmm. So just illuminate more uh, things that like taking your focus, but 
and making you busy, but are not productive. So that will be probably my main thing. I love that your network is your net worth. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. I think that might be the title for your episode here. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so how do you balance some of the demands of, you know, business and pleasure and, you know, <laughs> Chicago, Florida, California, your child, like having a life for yourself, like doing things for yourself. How do you balance all those things um, and still, you know, feel like you're doing a good job for your clients? Yeah, so it's it's hard, you know, like, especially I was challenged in my life, not only like being an immigrant, you know, start from zero, uh, two things that really like made me even stronger. So my child was, you know, he has disabilities, Roman. And, you know, like, when I heard that he had epilepsy, he has like problem with vi- vision. We just discovered it, that he has hearing loss, you know, some like, so I'm waiting for hearing aids. Um, he goes to PT, physical therapy, occupational therapy, you know, they told me he's never going to walk. So he's like, oh, he's like, that's a wheelchair. I'm like, no, 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 no. So I was fighting for his health. So like while I was doing real estate, I was fighting for my baby's health. I was taking him to the best therapies, finding the best doctors, like all this stuff. And the next thing that really hit me so hard, it was war in Ukraine, where my mom called me like in the middle of the night. She said, Julia, like our building is shaking. There is bombs around. If I don't call you tomorrow, I love you. Oh. And I'm like, wow, like the war is real. Like, and my brother, his house, like got a missile in his house, but thank God he was not home. My parents live by the airport where it's like all bombs and missiles were flying around. So my biggest goal was to bring them to United States and leave them with me. And really hard work and dedication I got my mom, my dad, my brother, his wife, their baby, and my brother, mother-in-law. So six people. I brought six people here. Amazing. I saved them. Yeah, they're, everybody is healthy and alive. So, Are they all been there in San Diego with you? So my parents, but my brother, I gave them one of my apartments in Chicago. So they live there. Yeah. But, That's you know, amazing. a lot of people will never experience that. And I will never want anyone experience the war or kids with disabilities. It's super hard. It's super hard. So, you know, like, so my point is like, I have, I'm so dedicated on my business, but those things just happening to me, you know? And yeah, I can like take my focus and do this stuff. And it's very important. But like for me is uh, my clients is my priority. It's not my job. It's my, my passion. I love it, you know? And uh, I'm pretty sure I could have do so many things if I don't have those problems, but like, that's what it is. It's a part of my life, you know, it's part of my story and I will never change it. And I love it. You know, like it's, uh, I love my parents. I love my family. I love my son. So they're here, they're safe. And now like my parents helping me with the son. So now I dedicated like I'm building my business in San Diego. I'm actually talking right now to one seller and we're going to get like 4.25 million, uh, listing so four million four and a half million dollar listing four and a half million dollar listing (laughs) it's like it's like crazy like for a girl from ukraine you know it's like i love that you keep kind of pinching yourself in a way like you you you've worked so hard for this like you deserve it you know and you've worked so hard in so many aspects of your life like and your family is so lucky to have you now i'm sure they were the ones that made you into the person that you are. So, you know, it's, it's kind of their fault too, (laughs) but exactly. They're so lucky to have you working so hard for them. So that dedication that you have for your clients, for your family, like it's just, it's who you are. And I think that that's amazing. I'm, I'm super inspired by your story today. So what is, what do you think is one of the most memorable moments in your real estate career so far? Like, if it was, you know, getting a house for someone that you knew was, you know, someone that really deserved it, or like, what was something that, you know, you look back on with just like super fond memories? Yeah, so I, I sold like probably around 200 properties so far. So each client, each closing is like so memorable for me. I always like getting presents for each of my clients. I'm, I'm getting like a blanket sets, like blanket pillows, like some stuff like photo frames, candles, towels, like welcome rocks. So I'm like going to closings with the bags. <laughs> and 
it's just like you're being a part of this amazing family story, you know, like you're you're there to make their American dream come true. Cause I know, like I know exactly what American dream means. And to see like those young families with kids or, you know, just like very hardworking people finally getting their first property, finally like having these keys and it's super like memorable just to be there, celebrate with them. And, you know, each family, each client has a such a unique story where they like, you know, every real estate transaction has problems. There's everything, you know, all the time. And we, you, you can queer together, you come together, you team up together. And at the closing, you know, there's just the happiest moment, keys, presents, like it's amazing. I love that you say that American dream, you know, because you're such a huge proponent of like, this is your American dream, you know? So I, I love that, that that's what brings you, you know, happiness in this career for yourself. I think that that's amazing. So what is your biggest way that you market yourself? What's the number one way you would say you get leads and that you would just like never stop doing because that's where you get most of your business. Is it all referral business at this point? Are you like buying leads from places? Like what is, what's your biggest way that you get leads? So I never bought leads. (laughs) Yeah. I never bought leads. Like I, it's, uh, I always were doing like referral, uh, and, um, social media. So that's, that's my two biggest one. And I will start doing more events because I believe that so it's got to be personal, you know, because uh, <clears throat> I know other realtors, like I have a lot of friends and they're buying leads and, you know, they're paying a lot of money for it. But then people don't get that connection, you know, with you. They don't know who you are, what, you know, why you are a good realtor, like, like no background, no nothing. So for me, it's like more meaningful to build this kind of like, this is what I do. This is my name, you know? Yeah. Maybe it would be not like 200 transactions, you know, maybe it's not going to be so much, but I know like with my strategy that I have right now, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And what would be your biggest advice for realtors out there um, that maybe they are in, you know, a couple of years into their career and they really want to kind of you know, sell more homes or do more for their clients, what would be some advice that you would give to those people? Never give up. Never give up. I had so many, um, you know, things in my life that, you know, happened that I want to just give up. And I'm like, oh, maybe I just go and work for somebody and make those $12 an hour, like $20 an hour and just relax. But when you have a potential and you know that you have this potential and you know you're good, you see some results, but like in some moments you just feel so unconfident, you don't have that extra support. Please remember this video that you can do it. Everything is possible. You know, it's just your mindset. Don't say why this happened to me. It's just like how, what can I take and be better from this, you know, and always team up with people who will lift you up because there's so many people around who want to bring you down and say, and say, this is impossible. Like all my people that I started with, they're like, Julia, just go on a cleaning, just be a good cleaning lady. You'll make $200 a day. Why do you need real estate? Just imagine what would happen to me if I stick with those people, you know? So pick right uh, people around you, you know, listen to a motivational videos, listen to podcasts, you know, try to find a way how you can be like with more successful people, like, you know, tr- even go work for like, like, you know, not so much money, like, you know, just say, hey, I can, you know, help you with your flyers, or maybe I can come to your event and like be a host, a hostess for you, you know, like just because you are talking to them and you're around them, you're going to learn so much. So yeah, never give up, move forward and um, you will sell for a million dollar listing. I know that. And you know that. So why not? I love that. This is amazing. You heard it from her straight from her mouth. So yeah. thank you so much, Julia. I seriously, yeah. I, I guess in my mind, you always like kind of, you know, since I don't know much about you, um, yeah. you all have in your mind, like how this will go. And, you know, I was excited to talk to you and like hear your story. Cause it was so unique, like where you're from and how many places you've been and all of this, but I didn't ever expect to have the conversation that we had today and hear just all the things that you've been through. And I love that, you know, that never give up message from you is so powerful because when someone else wants to give up, it's like, why? Look at what yeah. Julia's done. You know what I mean? So- I'm, I'm shocked sometimes when people are like, oh my God, you know, like 
like about kids, you know, sometimes like, oh, my son, you know, doesn't want to eat breakfast or they play too much iPads. I'm like, I'm like, you think this is a problem? It's like, I was looking, like, I was seeing doctors, like, literally every week of his life. Like, we were, like, at the appointments and doctor appointments every single, like, like, you, you, you should be so blessed with what yeah. you have. Like, you just should be, like, people should be more grateful and appreciate things they, they have. Yeah, that's all. You should have your own podcast that you just go on and give motivational advice because that's so powerful. I love it. Well, thank Julia, you so thank you so much. Thank you to it. everyone who listened. If you want to reach out to Julia, I always try to, oh, no, it's that way. Um, <laughs> I always try to figure out how I'm supposed to be yeah, pointing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, make sure you go and follow her. Make sure that if you have any questions for her, feel free to reach out and ask her questions. Cause as you can see, she's an open book. Um, yeah, and yeah. it's super helpful. And I just, I love that. So thank you again, Julia. I really appreciate thank you. it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. We will be back in just two weeks for our next episode. Have a good one, everybody. As a real estate agent, you know that the industry can be tough to navigate with constant challenges and obstacles to overcome. That's why we created the Agents Who Crush It in Real Estate podcast, where top performing agents share their insights and strategies for success. Join us as we dive into the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a thriving real estate business. Your host, Lindsay Pavaza, will be your guide on this journey. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from the best in the business.